Allow me to introduce myself. I am the last sane sports fan. Uh, I am a genius by trade. I just knew too much. Hello everyone and welcome once again to The View from the Midwest. Well, let's get right to it. A couple ideas I want to talk about today. Let's start off with a feel-good story. We talked about the uh, Tom Brady deflate gate never-ending saga yesterday. Let's talk a little bit about a feel-good story coming out of the NFL right now. Uh, just across the state from where I currently live, uh, just south of St. Louis in Kansas City, uh, they've got some great news. Uh, their safety, Eric Berry, looks like he's going to be able to return to football activities coming up this week uh, after having had a, a reasonably lengthy battle with cancer. Uh, as of right now, it looks like he's all in the clear and that he's going to be medically returned to the team. And uh, there's been interesting rumors coming out of this that Eric Berry has even managed to put on weight despite the fact that he was on chemotherapy, which uh, whether or not you want to believe into that or not, I mean, you have no choice but to wait and see when he gets out onto the field. But it, it shows the determination of character for Eric Berry that uh, he was not only not going to let this terrible disease beat him, he was going to overcome it and he was going to return to the profession that he loves and try to help out the Kansas City Chiefs do the best that they can. They're trying to put together a Super Bowl contending team. Uh, they're in a difficult division. Uh, you've got some of the best quarterbacks in football in Phillip Rivers and uh, Eli Manning out there uh, to contend with. So it's going to be no easy feat for the Kansas City Chiefs as a team, but it's good to see something positive coming out of the NFL right now because there's so much going on with the the deflate gate and all the uh, assaults and, and just off the field stuff that's going on right now, that it's good to see that there are feel good stories in the NFL, as there always are. I mean, uh, there was the, the little daughter of... Um, uh, Leah Still, I do believe her name was, with the uh, Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, she was overcoming cancer. Now Eric Berry is overcoming cancer. There, there's all sorts of great charity work as well being done by NFL players. Unfortunately, when you live in a 24-7 news cycle, you tend to focus on the negative. So as I said, it's good to see, uh, especially something basically in the Midwest's backyard, it's good to see something as positive as Eric Berry being allowed to return to football, get back to uh, some semblance of normal life, and perhaps put this terrible disease behind him. Moving on to the MLB trade deadline, the St. Louis Cardinals made a deal almost immediately after Matt Holliday got re-injured, uh, losing one nothing to the Cincinnati Reds last night. Whether this deal was in the works and it just so happened to coincide with the injury and that was a coincidence, I kind of think not. But I do think that John Moselak is a good enough general manager that he got on the phone as soon as things happened, got the wheels in motion, got things going. Brandon Moss of the Cleveland Indians is going to be coming to the St. Louis Cardinals. Uh, he's not necessarily setting the world on fire with Cleveland. There's a reason why he was immediately available at pretty much at the drop of a hat, given the idea that this probably didn't come out of nowhere. But the reason why it's a good deal for St. Louis is because they've added depth to the team. If, for whatever reason, Matt Holliday can't return for a lengthy amount of time, you've added a decent outfielder, basically what I know of Brandon Moss, which I will admit isn't too much, but what I know of him is you're getting probably a comparable defender and you're going to you're going to, no matter who you pick up you're going to get a drop off in terms of offensive production but Moss does have a decent amount of pop he does have okay power numbers and he is versatile if Matt Holiday is ready within a week's time you don't necessarily have to rush him back because uh Moss is an outfielder so therefore he can be slotted in wherever you need him out there 
but he's also listed as a first baseman. He does have a little bit of experience playing that position. So if you need to slot him in right there as well, you could potentially send Piscotty back down to the minors where he'll get day in, day out playing time. Or you can keep him up and kind of have a rotation. Or you can, uh, as I said, send him down to the minors and then Mark Reynolds will kind of return to that backup role. It gives you a lot more options in terms of where you can move pieces around, and the St. Louis Cardinals did not have to necessarily give up very much either. It was an exciting prospect in terms of pitching, uh, but ultimately it was a guy that was down in single A, and I know the pitchers don't necessarily progress through the minor league system as quickly as field players do, but if you're giving up a single A prospect at best, uh, for somebody who is going to aid your team in a time of need right now, then I think it's a good move. In the grander scheme, uh, I would have liked to have been interested in seeing what happened with the St. Louis Cardinals if nobody had gotten injured and the trade deadline had come and gone, simply because of the fact that there was a tweet out yesterday that, quite frankly, made me a little bit sick to my stomach. The St. Louis Cardinals have the best record in baseball, and somebody had the audacity to tweet out, and I mean, it was kind of in jest, but a lot of times it's pretty serious behind this. They were like, Dear John Moselock, do something signed St. Louis Cardinals fans. You don't need to do anything. These are not the New York Yankees of the National League. Despite the fact that they have a high pedigree and a history of winning, I don't want the Cardinals to be, I don't care if I'm a fan of somebody else, I don't want the Cardinals to be the New York Yankees because it's a stupid way of trying to run businesses where you're basically just trying to bet the farm every single time. Well, we need a major leaguer. We need a major leaguer. This guy's not doing enough right now. He's Even though he's a major leaguer, we need to get another major leaguer. The St. Louis Cardinals do not have the pieces in the minor league system that they can just give up every single person and not consider themselves damaged goods coming in about three or four years because some of their major pieces are getting up in age to where they need to start kind of replenishing their minor league system and to keep trading away pieces is not the thing to do. As I said, this deal, getting bread and moss, is a good deal because you didn't give up too much and you got a piece that will be flexible within your team. To try to trade for a mega superstar, which is basically what these idiots who tweet that kind of stuff out there are wanting, that is not smart business. And I'm glad that these are the reasons, regardless of what sport it is, whether it's hockey, whether it's soccer, whether it's football, whether it's baseball, I am glad that the fans are not in charge of things because their teams would be decimated with the idiotic deals that some of these people want to put together. Moving on, let's talk about another trade that kind of benefits uh, teams in the Midwest. Uh, Dave, or, uh, excuse me, Price uh, of the Detroit Tigers has been allegedly, it's not confirmed, but he has allegedly been traded to the Toronto Blue Jays. And I know people are saying, well, how does that benefit anybody in the Midwest? Well, the rumors going around were that either both Cole Hamels or Price could be going to the Los Angeles Dodgers or potentially some other teams in the National League uh, or American League. And ultimately, this helps out those teams. He did, uh, David Price was not kept in the, or in the American League Central. That will help out the Kansas City Royals. He didn't go to any kind of immediate rival. Went to an American League East team that basically takes him out of contention for anybody here right in the immediate vicinity. And it also doesn't hurt the St. Louis Cardinals because the L.A. Dodgers have good enough pitching staff as it is. They were going to be a difficult team for anybody to beat come the playoffs. The Giants are always looming. They've got a dangerous pitching staff as well. They didn't add a piece. Right now, these two trades with Hamels going to um, the Texas Rangers and Price going to Toronto benefit Midwestern teams like the Cardinals, like the Cubs, like the Pirates, like the uh, Royals. Because ultimately, they're kind of out of the picture. Unless you make the World Series, you don't have to worry about any of those teams. Uh, the, the Dodgers, uh, I mean... They were talking about it on sports radio here in town yesterday, and they made the case, oh, well, yes, I, I trust my 
rotation against anybody. Well, that's a feel-good, kind of touchy-feely answer. Quite frankly, just based on name power alone and what they bring to the table in potential, I don't know that I would want to go up against Clayton Kershaw, Zach Greinke, uh, and then one or the other of David Price and Cole Hamill. Uh, that it was especially in the five game series to start off the playoffs. So ultimately, I think these trades benefit the teams here in the Midwest by not going to immediate rivals. And it also helps, obviously, those teams that they're picking them up. I'm a little bit surprised on the Detroit side of things that they are so interested in kind of having a fire sale of their big name players. Uh, these players are free agents coming up in the off season, But having said that, you're only a few games out of the second wild card spot, so why not make a run? I mean, you do have a big decision to make because there is a big gap between the end of July and when the playoffs start. There's a good two months in there, and maybe they don't feel that they have the momentum going to make that kind of run. But it's still a little bit disheartening if I'm a De Detroit Tigers fan to see my team basically giving up. But unfortunately, that is the way of sports. I think we've all dealt with it no matter who te what team we uh, cheer for. And you just kind of have to deal with and roll with the punches. That is the view from the Midwest. What are your views on today's topics? Comment, rate, and subscribe. Give us a thumbs up, whether on Facebook or YouTube. And as always, until the next time, and I'll see you then. I remember when, I remember, I remember when I lost my